what attracted me immediately to Middlebury was its reputation for being an excellent school. But I had never heard of anybody who would go in there and said they didn't like it. I like the outdoors. I couldn't be in a city. I came to Middlebury a lot because of where it is. Also, I was interested in science, and I'd heard that Middlebury had a developing science program. Just I expected to grow a lot socially and academically. I wanted a hard academic program. A lot of people are you know, saying that the old question, what are you going to be when you grow up, or what are you going to do? And people seem to think that college is there to pursue things that you already know you're interested in. But I see it as more of a, a chance to experiment in different areas and explore. coming here and thinking, boy, nobody knows anything about my past. Trying to find someone to, to tell them about your whole life wasn't so easy after all. I have a very personal kind of dream. I want to write and I want to print. And hearing that Middlebury had a strong English department, I came here. It's very important to, to get away from being a face in the crowd. For me to find some roots in the English department, working with Robert Pack. What kind of a poem is it? What kind of a dress is it? Formal? Informal? Intimate? Remote? How do you hear the voice? I hear it as being intimate. And I, and I it's not enough to want to produce a poem. You have to also want to produce a good poem. My role is to try to cultivate in them or encourage in them something that is already there, a responsiveness to excellence and a love for real artistic achievement. And I think that the teacher has to become a kind of persuasive guide. I like to think that uh, my own enthusiasm for these things will be catching. and. Uh, They'll begin by saying, well, maybe he's not crazy. What if? I'm not going to be all nervous about going into PAC and if I have enough material to show him or whether my readings are right or wrong. If anything, we both share an excitement. And there's a trust there. It really was. I, I think this is one of Stephen's most beautiful and most difficult poems. And uh, I admire you for tackling it. And I thought you were a very... Well, from working with PAC, Although he's so much more learned than I am, and although he's a well-accomplished poet, you know, I'm, I'm in the same boat as he is, really. Uh, he's, still, he's still out for knowledge. Uh, I'm, I'm here for that. I see the poem finally as a poem about the making of the mind, what the mind can add to reality, and how the mind can affirm its own reality and therefore its own creations. I have my doubts every once in a while whether or not this business of uh, poetry or this business of literature re really has any meaning to it, whether it isn't just uh, to stay against confusion. And with somebody like Pack, well, he's been writing for 30 years, and he's had that tested and has continued to work for him and, and to, to sustain him in the sense that his mind needs fulfillment. Well, for me, he's my mentor. Generates himself through his children. That's lovely.
in doing something where you're really unsure of yourself, you learn a lot about fear and overcoming fear, about what motivates you to do something. Why am I here? Sort of who am I and what am I doing? You have to be able to take all, all your efforts, all your energies, and channel them into one moment of time. The kind of dedication it takes to become the best kayak racers, it's this exact same kind of dedication that it takes to be the best geologist. I almost came here blind. It was just sort of a, a general feeling about the place, nothing really specific. I was interested in biology when I came here. Got into geology my sophomore year, just really enjoyed it, the way it was taught here, the approach that was taken. And it's a small department. There are only a few professors. They get to know all their students really well and work really closely with students. This is one of the folds that you can see where the beds are coming up. They're turning upside down. They're headed off this way. And then they'll zigzag on up to the north. How can you tell the difference between the first deformation and the second deformation? Well, we'll see that the other one is at quite a different angle from this. And Instead of teaching you rock identification, which is usually a basic course, in a freshman class, they introduce you to problem solving, real problems, problems that oceanographers or structural geologists would be working on. OK, so you can see that's quite a different reading than what we were getting before. The other one was dipping at 15 degrees. This is at 55 degrees, and very clearly deforms that earlier mm -hmm. structure. What seems to make sense when you look at the thrust faults is that the thrusts are breaking off these things. One of the purposes I see of coming to school is to really decide what you want to do and to get good at it, or even see how to get good at it. I don't know if it's actually geology that got me interested or the way it's taught here. I don't know if I would have even thought of geology at another school. It's just so peaceful. You just assume every place else is peaceful and everyone else is well fed. Knowing that I'm going to have to be in the city for the rest of my life, probably, I'm taking sort of the easy way out and, and enjoying this while I can. But I find the kids here are just tremendously sensitive and very much interested in developing friendships that will last for the rest of their lives. I think it has a lot to do with just because Middlebury's in Vermont and so isolated. We're all totally dependent on each other for our own entertainment. But I think Middlebury provides you with the chance to really dig down deep inside yourself and to discover exactly what it is you want to pursue in life. You don't have to deal with a lot of baloney. Like, I'm really interested in politics. Here at Middlebury, you get the philosophy behind it. So by studying the philosophy of politics and then working in politics, the practical part, you, know, you really get a total view of what is possible to do and what has been done wrong. We start really late, but a lot of things we've been doing, we've been the first ones to do it. We are going basically to blitz the state and to blitz Boston. Okay. Winter term gives you the chance and provides the opportunity to have practical experience, which I think is invaluable, especially in political science. We'll probably be hitting a lot of houses, so just go up there and drop it like in the mailbox. You know, and if you run into people and they want to ask you questions, answer their questions. You can read all about Machiavelli, Plato, Aristotle and really not come out knowing how do you run a political campaign and, and, and how do you get your thoughts across to the populace. And so I think it's incredibly important that there be a winter term or a space of time when you, can, you have the choice of doing something practical and something as important as a presidential election. Did you call her the other day? Not you know, the other day, but okay. I've been out to her place right. once or twice and I met her here. Okay. I think she's on my committee. Not there yet. We're not. waiting for her to endorse you. That's oh, why. Yeah, okay. sure. Now, I'll tell you where we stand in terms of the black community. We have about six or seven really strong endorsements from big black recognized. Of course, education is important. And if it wasn't for Middlebury, I wouldn't be able to write a sentence. 
and I wouldn't have the confidence it takes to um, try to organize a community behind a person. You know, so we've got a really strong start there. Get your syllabus, get your syllabus. Truth, Mustard. wisdom, enlightenment. What we're going to be doing during this month is tossing out to you a whole bunch of ideas. The question, the broad question we're seeking to understand here is how can we organize the human diversity, uh, the diversity of all living things that inhabit the same physical global environment? How can we all live together, to put it simply, grow together on the same planet? What ethics, what rules of good conduct would permit us to realize He just has idea. an intense dynamism around him, and he's, he's always thinking and questioning, and they're not philosophic concerns. They're very much things that we, as people and, and students and as a new generation have to think about. A global community is going to have to be based on a very... I'm trying to do something and that is to spread an awareness of the really gut issues that need attention that are worthwhile dealing with. One has to convey that passion. This is not remote or irrelevant to their own lives. Politics certainly isn't. The study of politics isn't. Technology is only being used to increase the bureaucracy. What do you think is the essential difference between, for instance, a Henry Kissinger who's at the top of a bureaucracy and a global strategist like Christ or, or Gandhi or whoever? How they would seek to achieve their objectives, which uh, differs considering the resources they have at hand. What did Gandhi have when he started out? Nothing. Teaching is really helping others in their own attempts at self-discovery more than uh, knowledge for the sake of knowledge. It's knowledge for the sake of action. That you don't conquer souls, you don't win uh, ideological uh, struggles uh, by physically defeating, coercing your opponents. You have to reach their souls themselves. You have to work within them, persuade them, educate them, show them their own conflicts. You want to be able to say something more than, I wouldn't mind doing this or that. This is probably the most flexible or experimental time you'll ever have mm -hmm. in your whole life, maybe. You're he really cares about his students and about helping them in any way to satisfy their life's ambition. Uh, trust your impulses, I'd say. You have to say. I mean, you have to leave. You have to go on to something else. I know right now I'm getting pretty worried about it, and to have somebody to help me is, is pretty good. In doing something for other people, something out there beyond myself. Well, here's I a good job. I just heard of one. The Nutrition Institute, mm -hmm. which is a national institute located in Washington, is starting a new program to develop materials, brochures, pamphlets, articles for newspapers to educate people about basic facts of nutrition. That's 
it seems like one thing that cuts across a few of your interests. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's a short-term program, but it's a beginning. <laughs> I wanted a certain type of college, a good academic school, a co-ed school, a small New England type college. I was interested in, in languages and interested in the humanities in general. So that Middlebury pretty well fit that description. Celui du maître, d'accord? Eh bien, elle est juste. I took French courses the first year. Elle est très chrétienne, ça, ça c'est très important, <laughs> bien entendu. Hein? Elle, est, elle est quoi d'autre? Il parle des nouveautés, il pense qu'on a commencé à parler, euh, penser d'autre chose que le, les dogmes de l'Église. C'est ça. As it turned out, I did take both Russian and Spanish. Maybe it was just the fact that I was in an environment where a lot of other students were taking language courses. Какое центральное географическое положение много содействовало росту и развитию Москвы? Personally, I've always had a sort of fascination for France. And even before I went to college, I was pretty sure that I'd be going off for my junior year abroad in France. I thought that after two months I'd be able to speak fluently. I had sort of underestimated how much you have to work and observe and be in an environment to really be a part of it. By the end of the year, someone told me, although people wouldn't think I was French, at least they couldn't tell where I was from. Je suis presque certain que c'est pas c'est pas ça parce que moi c'est tellement bon. interdit. Mais ça ne fait rien. Bon, je vais essayer de le bon, faire un mélodie. Bon, mais ça va. <rire> Middlebury really hasn't changed a lot for me. I think uh, the big thing is that I was so attached to Middlebury when I left, so that when I came back, it was in a way it was like coming home again. I think it has to do with the fact that it's a small, relatively isolated, co-ed, liberal arts college that places a big emphasis on its being a fairly self-contained community. It's, it's given me an opportunity to meet an awful lot of people that I'm awfully glad I met. And I think I've, I've matured a lot just as a person from being here, where there were other people, some that thought like me and some that could give me a sort of a mental stimulation, where there were professors that could give me a lot of good input, both academic and, and otherwise. There were resources of the community that could contribute something else to my life. Sports, for example, um, the opportunity to be out in the wilderness. Middlebury has given me something, really, that I think I will have for the rest of my life. Whether I forget it or not, I'll, I'll have it. For me, that's the most important thing.